All right, so in this video, I'm going to make a sheath, specifically this sheath. And just to highlight some stuff, just so, so that you know if you're interested or not, I'm trying to make the smallest sheath I can width-wise for this knife. And this knife is the widest knife I have, which is two and a half inches wide. Um, here's a comparison to the previous knife that, that uses eyelets, I mean the pre previous sheath, and how much I saved in terms of width by using this, this, different, this different shape. I'm going to talk about uh, some differences. What up? There we go. So it's about half an inch. So I will talk about some differences in, in terms of how these are shaved off. I'll talk about that in the end. And I'll also talk about um, how, why I was trying to, in the beginning, to only use two rivets to make the whole thing work. And I'll talk about why that didn't work for this knife. But besides that, um, one of the things that I include in this video is that uh, how to make how to how to shape the throat of, of the kydex sheath for a handguard, which I haven't really seen in any other video that I, I can recall. And just to show you, yeah, okay, so yeah, just so you know, um, yeah, so then I'll just start right now. All right, so here's some of the tools I'm going to use, and so a heat gun, uh, some metal shears, a saw, a utility knife sandstone marking thing glasses i'm gonna use a respirator too when i when i grind uh the kydex this is uh just a clamp and i'll show you later for what, what it's for these two are interchangeable i guess type of clamps and then uh this is the the pad that i used to form the the kydex once i heat it up and it used to be an uh, inch and a half it's just two boards that i put together and it has it has a hinge in the middle and I just press it down with a, with a clamp that I'll show you later. So that, and then this is what I use to heat up, the Kydex. Just, yeah. Instead of, a, instead of an oven, I use this just because I didn't think I needed anything else. So yeah, all right. All right, so now I'm just going to mark my Kydex so I can cut out the piece I need. Uh, use Kydex T or Kydex 100 if you can find 100. But do not use Kydex V. Kydex, Kydex V sucks. So it's, it's just recycled Kydex. All right. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically just, I need about half an inch from like everywhere. So half an inch here, half an inch here. And then, uh, even though I'm not going to use those rivets, I still like to leave a little good amount of portion out there just so, just so I have some more room to work with. And then this, this is going to be, this side's going to be right up against the kydex. This is going to be a taco, taco shaped kydex. So I'm just going to. Imaginary line. All right, I'm just gonna flip this over, and then same thing on this side, about half an inch. I'll continue this too, about half an inch there. So I'm gonna cut this out, but first I'm just gonna mark it with a ruler, just so everything's nice and straight before I cut it out. All right, so I'll score this side first, and it'll be the same thing for the other side too. So, I'm just going to run it off the table. So I just like to do it twice. All right. So I'll just show you this part, then I'll just cut the rest out myself. And this, let me see if you can see it. This will just snap like that. So there you go, see? And then you just go back. There you go. So I'll do the same thing for the rest. And I'll show you in a second. So this is the square I want. Right, so this next part has a lot to do with speed. So my clamp's already at the size I need it. So once I close this thing, I can clamp it like right away. The other things I'm gonna be using gloves because I'm going to have to handle the kydex and it gets hot and I'm going to use this little extra piece of kydex I got to basically uh, get the edge on this piece and then flip it over so I can just constantly flip it over. Um, yeah, okay. And I'll, I'll go over what I'm going to So I'm going to explain what I'm going to do so I don't have to explain it while I'm doing it just because it's going to be kind of weird. Um, so this is going to be at 300 degrees. I'm going to be flipping this thing over because the edges are going to curl and I, I want to get the heat basically 
the same all across, so no particular spot burns. Once this is like super floppy, like lasagna, I think if you heard that, uh, what is it, simile or something like that. Um, but once it's floppy like that, you, I'm going, I'm going to put this on here, you know, put roll, put on top of this. I'm going to try to align the edges on this thing. I need to do the glossy part on the inside. So this is the glossy side. This is the rough side. So glossy side for the knife. I'm gonna have to match the edges, and then I'm also gonna have to push this as back, so so the tip is gonna have to touch the end of the kydex once it's like in a taco, taco shape. So I gotta remember those things, and then also, I have to watch out, since this is so long, I have to watch out that the kydex doesn't get folded on the end, it doesn't go like here, and it gets folded over by this other piece, so. All right, let's do it. Right, so this is kind of the boring part, but because it takes a little bit of waiting. This might be a two piece video but we'll see all right so i can always cut this i guess to to make it towards the end it's getting those little streaks i don't want that all right so this seems about fine there and next part so line up the sides that's where you want it Push the back up. You don't want to deform. All right. You don't want to deform the, the top when you push the tip up against the back. Extend. too close to that I mean away from the edge so it started basically uh, pulling it up from the back so I had to move it again all right so hopefully that didn't mess with it too much yeah all right so now I gotta wait like an hour and check up on it if it's warm at all I can't take it out because it will deform a bit so I just had to after an hour I'll check touch it and if it's fine um, I'll continue from there so one drawback from using like crazy thick foam is that it takes a longer time to, to for the heat to dissipate, which makes sense. But you, in my opinion, you get a better, a better, um, a more detailed uh, shape also from the Kydex. All right, so I got this out of the little press, and everything seems fine. Everything's nice and deep. So now what I'm going to do is. I'm going to cut away the excess, um, but I'm still going to leave some, some amount of extra material just in case I need it for whatever reason. So here's the edge, as you can see, this is the edge of the knife, of course. And normally, if you, you're going to use eyelets, you got you to gotta measure out to about half an inch or about out to here, basically. This is almost an inch. You got to measure out pretty good and then use your eyelet. And then in the end, at the very end, grind it as close as you can to the eyelets. But for this, so I'm gonna use those rivets. I'm gonna go a little bit closer. I'm still gonna leave excess, but I'm just gonna cut it uh, closer than I know. What I'm gonna use to cut this is these uh, metal shears. The thing is with me metal shears is, also, this is why I'm, I'm like going out of point, is I cut this little corner just so, you can sh so I can show you is that it, it stresses out the kydex. See the little white spot there? So when you are cutting, it does stress it out, it does deform it, and it cuts it at an angle. So you wanna leave yourself a little bit of a area so you can cut it and then grind it to, to the appropriate um, distance. So, so next is I'm going to have to heat up this, this little part here. And this little part here. So I'm gonna do that to flare it out so I can actually, you know, put put in and put out the knife. But also I have to shape it in a way so these are gonna be the retention points, these two sides. So the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna to try to, the way I'm gonna just heat up this area instead of everything else. If I heat up anything else, it's gonna deform the, the kydex, is I'm gonna use a heat gun, but I'm going to, and also a, a welding glove, um, I didn't put that in the <laughs> the things that I was going to use, but 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap the, the this this cloth around everywhere I don't want to uh, heat up. And then something like this. This is just a rough a rough showing of what it is. And then I'm just going to heat up try to heat up that spot only, so only this. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to stuff another piece in here cuz I don't want any hot air going into the actual uh, sheath too. So I'm going to do that. So this is how it looks. It's all wrapped up. I'm trying to I'm trying to isolate the parts I want to heat up as much as it doesn't go all weird on me. So This is the reason I'm wearing a welder's glove is because I don't want, you know, to get burned. All right, so it's going to see it's un unfurling. And I don't want to put too much in there, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to do the edges. And like everything else, I don't want to overheat it. Here comes the part where I kind of get slightly not burned but i have to shape it with my hand okay so i still want a little bit of, a little bit of an indention on the sides so it actually grabs onto the knife so i can get a better look at it okay i'm gonna let this so this is fine. See, there's a little slight indention on the sides. That's fine. More of an indention here. That's okay, I guess. And this is hot, so don't do this, actually. Alright, so that's cool. I'm going to let this cool. And after I do that, it's only going to take like a few seconds. After I do that, I'm going to heat this little part here and then push it up. So, part of what that's going to do is actually came out okay almost the same the intentions aren't so bad still kind of more of an intention there but that's fine i think all right so what that's going to do is i only want pressure from the sides i only want it to grab on from the sides i don't want it to grab on from the top because if it's grabbing on from from three points it's just you can't you're not going to be able to take out your knife so just from the sides and this part I'm gonna push up, so it's gonna it's gonna help as a thumb ramp, but it's also gonna uh, unengage this top part here. Before I put the top piece on, I am stuffing this completely all the way to here, so I don't I don't want that air to go in. I only want to isolate this, and I don't want to like the rest to get deformed, like I said. Okay, so this is how it looks, and I'll do this one on camera too. Why not? So I don't go on the highest setting on this thing. See the little gap here? I don't want air to go into anywhere else, so I gotta be careful. Let's see if I can actually do this. This is gonna burn a little. That's the other thing I don't want overly stretch the things I've already moved, so I don't wanna push it up too high because then it'll just narrow out and stretch. Right, so far it's looking good I will go over all this I gotta grind all this too um, this end but once I grind here I'll be fine it's just a little bit of grinding just from just this right here but all right so next up this little spot here that's gonna be kind of a pain I think so once again I gotta isolate it in just this little area 
just this little piece. We'll see if I can do that. All right, so this is how this looks. It's kind of a mess. I use a clamp to grab this guy right here. All right, so I don't want to do... I want to I wanna heat from here up. I don't want to heat the, that little bump because I need that bump to, to retain it, retain the knife. So I'm just going to heat here and here. Hopefully that will work out. We'll see. This, I don't think I have to do much um, in term, terms of like pushing with my finger. I think if it just goes, it'll just go up. Um, I mean, it'll deform to where I want it to deform. We'll see. Okay, maybe I am gonna have to push it with my finger. Yeah, you see how it's getting shiny? Yeah, that means it's like it's getting too hot. All right. No, everything's backfiring on me. Way too hot. <sighs> yeah, that is hot. Slowly, it'll start going back to normal. I mean, I won't have to hold my finger there that long, just simply because it'll, the heat will, um, once the heat dissipates, it'll start getting stiffer. All right. Once again, I think, no, yeah. One side's slightly more indented than the other. So I might have to heat that up, I gotta check. All right, so before I try the, the knife in here, since I grind it and do all this stuff, I'm gonna spray this with water on the inside. All right, so I'm gonna try this out. So I have to flare these out a little bit more, just on the edge here. Yeah, just here. Okay, so after that last adjustment, it seems fine. So I'm just gonna hold it here closed. Yeah, so that seems fine. So now what I gotta do next is I have to choose a point here so I can put my rivet. Um, what I'm gonna do is, so I use these clamps, and like I said, it can be Basically any clamp, you just want a small footprint, um, but I'm going to use these. So I'm going to choose a spot. That's a little hard, but... So Kydex does loosen a bit over time. So you do want it to be hard, not but not too crazy hard. I'm going to say here for right now, just here. Right here. Alright. And then we'll try it out. That is hard. That's a little, way too hard actually. So let's not do that. And then here. So just make sure you don't, you're not putting it, well, this is just obvious, but just don't, don't put it, um, put it as close as, as you would with the rivet you're gonna do. Uh, this is fine. This is hard, but it's not like crazy hard. Yeah, okay, so that's, this is where it's gonna be. All right, so it's gonna be right in the middle of that. 
And next I'll show you how to how to do the rivet. For this part what you need is some wire cutters, a ball peen hammer. Uh, this, these are 10 gauge rivets. I find that these are like a good in between, not too crazy thick or, and then uh, not too thin also. So that, this is the bushing that comes with it. You do need one of these, it's like a setting, um, a setting tool. And I'll show you how to use that in a second. And also something pointy, just to mark it, and I'll show you in a second uh, how or why you need this. All right, so for placement of the rivet, I am going to put basically where I want it. So I kind of want it at the center of where it was. I might move it over a little bit more. Um, but all right, so this is where the rivet's gonna end up being here. So I don't want it to actually be too close to the edge because I don't want that much pressure on it. But I'm gonna say right here, right about here is fine. So I'm gonna mark it just to know that that's where I want it. And you can barely see that. All right, so then after that, I'm gonna drill a hole and I'll come back. All right, so next up, I'm gonna put the rivet on here and you wanna put the rivet, the head towards you, however this is gonna go on your body, and then the point away from you. So this is a, just a little anvil I have. Gotta make sure there's a hole. And so now here's the, the bushing. It's gonna go here. And is we're gonna use uh, this thing to drive it down. All right. Make sure it's actually on the hole. So I can do that. There we go. And take a look at it. You do want to drive it down as much as you can. You don't want to deform the kydex too much. I still need more. A little bit more gusto. That's fine. All right, so next I'm gonna cut this off. And I'm just gonna go right up against it. Off it goes. All right, I thought it was gonna fall, but no. Okay. And then now this little part here, I am going to pe peen it. So, a little bit closer, I think. Uh, hmm. That's fine. All right, that seems okay. So next time I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for any any sharp edges and I'll peen that too, just to make sure everything's nice and flat. You don't want anything that will just like wear out your clothes or your shirt or whatever, so. All right, so I went over every little part that seemed like it would, it would uh, scratch and this is how it looks. It looks okay. All right, so now what I gotta do, I'm going to mark where I want those two notches. All right, so using this as a reference, there's one right here, original one. The notches should be about six inches apart. And then um, the actual notch, the first notch is gonna have to be around the rivet, close to the rivet. So maybe around here. I can always do it forward a little bit, which won't make much of a difference and it'll cover the rivet, but um, I don't know about that, so we'll see. But like, let's say if I decide to do it here, the next rivet will be over here on this end. So I'll do that now. All right, so I already marked everything. And 
This is where the first um, the first little notch is going to go for the paracord, and this is where the second notch is going to go. So the the belt I use is an inch and a quarter uh, wide. So the tabs, the little leather tabs I use, have to be at least two inches and a quarter. So that's this measurement here. So this is as far as I can grind, as far as I, as I can grind. Basically, I can't go any further in because then the tabs won't won't they'll start folding over the edge. So that's that. And then the next part is choosing a spot for my second rivet. I almost forgot about this. So I'm gonna make the notches with a round file and I'm gonna use the 316s. Um, so Paracord, the, the one I use, it's like for 750 pounds. It's, it's rated for 750. Um, it's about, it, it'll fit in a quarter inch hole. Um, I want this to be slightly less than a quarter inch just so it, it uh, squeezes into the hole. So I'm gonna use 316s. I'm gonna make the notches, and then when I make the notches, I'll show you too after I make them. I'm not I'm not gonna do them on camera, but I'll do the notch, and then I'll I'll go around. I'll round out the notch too, just so there's no sharp edges. All right, so this is how it looks in the end. I had to make some modifications to it because oh here, let me show you the notch too. I had to make some modifications to the sheath itself because. This specific knife didn't work with only two rivets. And the reason for that is for, for the sheet that did work, the knife was mostly straight and then it tapered towards the end. This one is super wide in the beginning and then it tapers down to like nothing. So it just continuously tapers from, from beginning to end. And the reason that something that's straight would work is because the rivet in the beginning keeps it from tilting down, but so does the kydex that rides up against the top. So it's constantly, constantly keeping it from from going down enough that it actually pokes through. That wasn't the case with this other blade, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, this, this came out, you see right there, it got too close. Well, it came out a bit, but that was enough to be dangerous. So I took the opportunity to, to just experiment with uh, the sheath itself. And what I found out is if I do just a regular 10 gauge rivet, it comes up to, what is this, 3 eighths of an inch. Um, if, if I decide to shave it down, which I don't like actually, I do not like this, um, it comes down to a quarter of an inch from, from edge to, to top. And if I don't do anything at all, if I'm able to, to to actually use only two rivets on a knife design, then I can actually get it to 3 16 which is nice. That is in compared to, to something like this, which is, this is three quarters of an inch, but um, with an eyelet, you can get it down to like half an inch uh, if you just get close enough to the edge and then you shave this down close enough to the eyelet. So yeah, those are the results. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. If once I do make a sheath for a knife that I can I can actually use only two rivets, I'll show you uh, the sheath and talk about it then. All right.